Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I organise all of my research project notes in Notion and how I use those basically to organise paper notes in Notion which I then use to write papers. Basically you'll get a sense of what the thesis portion of my PhD student Notion template looks like. I'll have that link down below in case you want to get your hands on it. I do think it would work sort of well for like non-thesis based work and also for other types of thesis work um, but there's a whole video on it linked down below and just to say if you do sign up to my email list which is linked down below you will get 10% off the Notion template. In case you're new here my name is Kira. I'm a third year PhD student based in Dublin, Ireland and on this channel I like to talk about all things related to being productive, motivated, maintaining work-life balance and I suppose being organized while doing a PhD. So if you like that type of content be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how I organize all of my thesis notes. I'd love to hear from you like how you organize your own project notes because I do feel like I've tried a bunch of different things in terms of paper planning, iPad planning and now digital planning more so with Notion. And I just feel like with the PhD, there's just so many things you develop over the years in terms of notes that it's really hard to manage them all. And I have been finding that what I've been doing now in terms of organizing the individual projects and then putting them all into like sort of different to do, doing, done has been really helpful for when I then eventually need to go back and write my actual thesis. I'll have all of these project notes for the different sort of chapters organized. And I'm hoping that will really help with writing my thesis, we'll see but it's something I wish I had been doing from the beginning. The project that I'm sharing in this video is a work in progress, so I have to sort of be careful with what I share about it, I think. I will also be doing a video eventually about how I write papers, and I do feel like the way I've been organizing my notes has been making the way I write papers so much quicker. It's been really helpful, but I will be doing basically a whole video sharing how I then turn all of these notes into a nice pretty paper for a journal or a conference at the end of all of this once I have sort of finished up with that paper. So just as a roadmap, when you purchase the Notion template, this is the sort of older version and then this is the newer version in Dashboard 2.0. You'll find the thesis section down here and you can just go straight to that and then this is what we'll be with. So we have the PhD Statement of Purpose, which is just a bit of guidelines for how to write that. There's um, an overview of how to write an abstract with one of my videos on how to do that. Um, it's a good idea to just write an abstract for your thesis early on, just gives you a bit of a guide, even though it will probably change a lot, it still can be really good to do. And then we have the literature section, so you can track all of your literature notes. And again, I have a load of videos just in there about what to do for literature review. And then research plan, so this is creating your Gantt chart for your PhD and some videos on that. And then lastly, like your area to track any upcoming publications and the types of ideas that you might have for those papers. Um, so then moving on, this is just your global inbox. So anything that you have like ideas for that will show up everywhere so you can pop stuff in there and then put it in the right place later. Got the research diary. So that has options to put in thesis notes or meeting notes or anything like that. And then we have all of our projects. So this is just a sample, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like in mine, which is over here. So these are all of my thesis projects. I do wish I had started this earlier because a lot of these completed tasks, like there's there's more I could have put in and had more notes in these, but it was when I was doing either paper planning or iPad planning. So I have like, I suppose, about a year and a half maybe more of my PhD that I don't have notes for and it would have been really nice to have those. So essentially when I'm working on a new project, I will move it from the not started projects that I have planned for the PhD into the in progress section here. And then obviously when it's finished, you can drag it in there. So you literally just drag in there. And I just think it's really nice, basically for when I come back to write my thesis, to have all of my projects notes here and not just the papers, which will have, you know, just what we decided to include in the paper, but like every single thing that we did will be in these uh, project folders. So I'm gonna show you what's going on in one of the projects that I'm working on at the moment. This is something that we're in the process of writing up. So these are a little bit messy, 
that's because I'm a little bit messy, but I do try and keep my notes as organized as possible. So, so this project that we're working on is training break summarization. So looking into training disruptions in marathon training plans and whether that sort of has an impact on the performance of a marathon runner. So that's just to give a little bit of a guide for this. But the way I lay these out, typically in the beginning, I'll have some sort of like motivation for the project. So what we're trying to do. Um, I'll go through the methods of what we did in terms of cleaning the data and, and everything and then some summarization about the data set that we're working with and then for each like individual research question um, so obviously these are just some initial summary ones and typically when I'm presenting results to my supervisors this is how I choose to do it because I can keep my notes in here and a lot of the time I could obviously present the, you know, Jupyter notebook where I have all of my programming done and all of the plots will be there. But what I find is sometimes then like it'll disconnect and you might accidentally rerun something and the plot will disappear or just that as well. A lot of the time those are very messy, whereas I try and keep these notes organized. But when we're looking into certain things, so for training break frequency, one sort of concern that we have is because we're looking only at people who actually finished the marathon, because we're looking at the marathon training programs of people who ran a marathon. If we're looking into training breaks, this will sort of exclude a lot of people who didn't feel like they could do the marathon because of their training disruption, um, whether that was down to being too busy or um, injury or anything. So one thing that I looked into with that was what proportion of people did actually drop out of the race and I can only find a few studies that show things like that. But so that's a specific question that didn't come up before when I was doing my general literature search because we were looking into certain questions. And I think when you're starting to look at more specific individual projects, there'll be new questions that come up and new things that you need to look for. So whenever I'm doing an individual project, I like to add in some literature here. And then, of course, I'll go and add that into my general literature review afterwards as well but I do like to keep it in this project to give us a bit of a guide. And then we go into our actual results. So what were the things that we found around training breaks? And to, I can share actually a lot of this just because it is a work in progress and like it will be something that we'll hope to publish, but we're not gonna be publishing these exact plots or anything. So in other sections, I have again, more literature uh, analysis and all of that. So that will be how I organized one of them. And then the other one, that we have it's sort of the same idea but this is the one where we're actually writing the paper so after the motivation the data the methods and the evaluation um, and again these are some old plots so I suppose it's okay to show those then I would go into a paper plan so in this I've done just basically an overview of, of what am I going to put into this paper and um, because it's a very different paper than I'd be used to um, it definitely has helped to have this sort of plan and I think starting with bullet points like this can really help to make it easier when you're writing up the paper. I really find that starting off with some guides about what you want to put into each of the areas can really help. So what I have is the introduction section, somewhat of a general intro and then into the sort of more specific topic and then what our work is going to be sort of showcasing. And then I go into the results and this is like even still quite messy because it's stuff that we're working on right now. So like fixing up plots and stuff like that. So this is one thing that I find really helpful when I am working on the last stages of putting together graphs. I would usually have a lot of changes that I need to make. And so writing a little list like this with the checkboxes, I find really, really helps for that. Um, and again, so I can't really go into any of the lower down results. Um, and then I have like the discussion and the method section. So I've just found that like doing these, the notes in here is really helpful. And this will be what I usually present to my supervisors in our meetings. And like, I usually, you can see we have some notes down here. So that's just something even from the last meeting that we had. So this is how I like to organize my notes. Um, I have found that it's been mainly really, really helpful for when I do want to go and write up something. I find it really doesn't take as long as it does when you're literally just starting from scratch. Um, especially because this is like a digital version, which means I can just easily copy over these bullet points and then work from those within the paper. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below about how you organize your notes for your research projects or anything like that. I think it's always great to 
get to know other people's forms of taking notes and that to really see what is the best way that we can do things and if we all share the love of knowledge together that would be really great thanks so much for watching thanks to my wonderful members and i will see you all in the next video